Hey everyone, it's Kenny Vosick, and today I'll be doing an honest review on my brand new 2022 Lexus NX350 Escort. So I've had this car for about three months now, so I figured it was time to do an update on this vehicle. So I put about 7,500 miles on the vehicle, so I've had a chance to explore all the new technology and all the things that I like and dislike about this vehicle. So my goal for this video is to provide as much information as I can so that way you as a buyer or as a new owner of this vehicle can get the most out of your new Lexus NX350 or your NX model. Now I'll be going over the basic specs of my vehicle and then I'll dive into the things that I like and dislike about this vehicle. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is my new 2022 Lexus NX350 F-Sport. This vehicle is featured in the ultrasonic blue Mica 2.0 exterior with a black new Lux interior. This vehicle features a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, an eight speed automatic transmission, a total of 275 horsepower, and an all wheel drive system. On this model, we have our operated 20 inch five spoke alloy wheels and a black gloss finish on the Escort package. On the front of the vehicle, we have our operated Lex spindle grille in the Escort trim and our operated triple beam LED headlights. Now with the Escort package, this is going to include your bold Lex spindle grille in a black gloss trim and it's also going to include your painted mirrors that are black along with painted fenders. So these are color key to match the color of the vehicle. And of course you get your painted roof rails and your upgraded 20 inch black gloss alloy wheels. Now I do wish they did offer more color options as far as the wheels. They do look nice when they're clean, but it is very hard to keep them clean because they do get dusty easily. I wish they did come out with a two-tone finish or more of a dark graphite trim, but I hope eventually they'll come out with more colors on the newer models. I will say that Lexus definitely improved the look of the NX on the front. As you can see, they integrated daytime running lights into the actual headlamps. So of course this creates more of a cohesive look. The previous generation had a lot of sharp lines and they definitely made it a little bit more softer on this model. I also love that this vehicle features the upgraded triple beam LED headlights. That was one thing I wanted on this model as well. Of course we get our LED fog lights with cornering lights and LED turn signals as well. Now you may have noticed I did add some crossbars on the top of the vehicle. So this is something I actually had to buy after I bought my car because it did not come with this initially. I believe the price of these were $325. So of course I had to order them and then get them put on my vehicle. And of course my vehicle does have the upgraded panoramic roof. So that is a $500 option. Now, one thing I did notice is that when they did the black chrome trim for the Escort package, for some reason, they forgot to black out the chrome trim on the mirrors. I don't know if that was intentional, but it would have been nice if they at least matched this chrome color with the chrome that's all around the vehicle. So that's something they could hopefully improve on on the next year model. Now from the side, it's very distinct and it almost looks like the previous generation NX. You probably really can't tell that it's changed too much from the side, but really when you start walking towards the rear of the vehicle, that's when you notice the bigger changes on this model. And you can see that the new taillights wrap around the whole tailgate of the vehicle with the new Lexus rear batting. And this is going to be the new design language on all new Lexus models in the future. Of course, we do get our LED tail lights with LED turn signals and LED reverse lights. Now, all Escort models come with this chrome diffuser that's right here, but for some reason, they chose to hide the exhaust tips on all NX models. It would have been nice to at least show these on the Escort model, but I guess they're kind of doing away from that. They're also doing away from the Escort badging. So after 2021, Lexus decided to get rid of all the Escort badges on all their models. I'm not sure why they decided to do this, but I guess they're trying to go for a cleaner look on the rear end. Now this vehicle does feature an improved hands-free kick sensor. So of course, as long as you have your key fob on you in your possession, you are able to open and close the rear tailgate of the vehicle. 
So I notice you don't have to be too exact with the position of your foot under the rear bumper. So it's really good at recognizing as long as you do place that foot right under the rear bumper, no matter if you're right in the center or down the middle, it's really good at knowing that you at least have some kind of motion moving it back and forth. So compared to the RX, I know a lot of people had trouble using that. So that's one of the big things that they changed on this model. Now in the cargo area, the NX, of course, we do have our folding receipts with our cargo cover. For some reason, they included carpet floor mats, which I had to order all weather mats. I'm not sure why they didn't include all weather ones in the beginning, so I did have to purchase those separately, and that was about $140 for the all weather mats. Now, interesting thing on this model, of course, you're not going to have a spare tire that's under here, but instead it's going to include additional storage. So of course you can fit whatever you need in here, whether you're going on a road trip or just to have more storage in your vehicle. And of course we do have our first aid kit that's right here. Now it's really easy to remove this cargo cover. So simply remove it from the hooks. All right, then simply fold it over. If I can get this while filming, there we go. So it folds just like that and it'll actually fit inside under. So you don't have to have it out if you don't want to. So once I pull this out, don't try doing this while you're filming. There we go. Okay. So now we have it in here. So simply just close it up. There we go. And just to show you, I'll show you how the seats look when they're folded down. So you pull on these. They'll fold right down. I did actually have to move some stuff in here so I did have to fold these down so it does have some good cargo space if you do need to use that that's really what this vehicle is for not not to be as big as the RX but still practical whenever you need to use it Now, one thing I wish my vehicle had was the illuminated trunk sills. I guess that's an option because mine didn't come with it. I would have preferred to have those, so that would have been a nice feature on this model. And of course, the left button is used to close the tailgate, and the right one is used to close and lock the vehicle. So if you want to close it and walk away, that would be the button that you would hit. And it actually won't let you close it if it knows that the other vehicle doors are open or if you leave the key inside the vehicle. So that's kind of a cool feature. And then I'll pull the seats back up and then they just lock in place. Now in the back seats of the NX, of course, it's not going to be the biggest room back here, but it's still pretty decent. And considering that I'm five foot five, I still get plenty of space back here as well. I do have the rear AC vents, and I also have a 12 volt power outlet along with two USB-C charging ports. So in total, this vehicle has four USB charging ports. And of course, inside our center console, we do have two couplers that are inside here. Overall, it's not too bad as far as the space. They do have a center hump rat that's right here, but it's not too protruding like the previous generation. So at, at least you could fit someone else in the middle if you really needed to do that. Now I do notice that on the S-Sport luxury package, it doesn't come with heated rear seats, but that is an option that you can get on the luxury package. Um, I know it's optional, so it's not gonna include that on all luxury models, but it is an add-on that you can get depending on the trim that you get on that vehicle. Not sure if it's available on the SWAR package though. Now inside the engine, it is going to feature the 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, which replaces a two liter four cylinder engine on the previous NX300. Now there are four different powertrains that you do get on this model. Um, you do get the 2.4 engine on this model, or you get the 2.5 engine on the NX250. And of course you also have the NX350 hybrid along with the 450H plug-in hybrid. 
Now, most of the models that we are getting here at the store will be the NX350. So that's gonna be the one that they'll heavily push or the hybrid one as well. The NX250 is more of a base engine, so we won't get as many of those. So that's gonna be more of an entry level model. And of course, all 350 models and 350 hybrid models are gonna be standard with all wheel drive. The NX250 is gonna be standard with front wheel drive, but is optional for all wheel drive. Now here is a new feature on this vehicle and this door handle is actually a digital latch so it actually stays in place. The handle doesn't actually move. There's actually a sensor that's behind the handle so if you touch it that unlocks the door for you and basically you no longer have to pull it. You just touch it and of course it'll unlock it. Now if you want to lock it there's the sensor right here where you can slide your finger and that will lock the door but if you ever do let's say your key pop fails to unlock it there's actually a thing that you can open right here and this is only open through I believe a credit card so if you open this piece up you can manually input your key in there so that way you can at least get into the vehicle. Now on the interior of this NX, we do have our upgraded F-Sport bolstered seating. I do find that the bolstering on this model is a little bit more aggressive. I do prefer the non-F-Sport seats in my opinion. I think they're a little bit more comfortable, but I think I can live with this for now. And then of course, as we go down, I did purchase these all-weather mats because it did not come with them. So I had to buy that along with the crossbars. And I also bought these aluminum door sills. So funny thing about these, uh, these are door sills that are on the NX. 350 uh, premium or luxury model and there's actually separate door sills that are on the s model so if you got the s illuminated scuff lights it would say s and it would light up now after realizing this i kind of thought well it looks fine like this so i'll just keep these so i'm just glad that i do have illuminated door sills in the first place now so i did buy these and of course i got them installed so i'll i guess i just plan on keeping these now now we do have the digital latch handle so of course if we do want to uh, open the door we simply push it in and then if we want to override it to do it manually we would pull it out twice and then that would also open the door now at the launch event they did recommend that we not open it manually because there is a chance that the door handle could break over time if we use this feature too many times so i really just stick with pushing it and then moving the door and that way we at least open it and really it's a seamless motion so that way you just push it and it's not away from you like a conventional door handle you just push it towards the door and you simply open it that way so i think that was really brilliant that they thought about that and of course we do have our automatic locks windows folding mirrors three person memory seating and our upgraded 17 speaker mark lemson audio system now this has been a big improvement from the last generation on my 2016 nx that i have my biggest complaint was that the sound system was really bad and that it would vibrate the license plate on the back of the vehicle. This system has improved greatly and I don't notice any rattling or vibrations on this vehicle. So I really am glad that they improved this sound system on this vehicle. And of course you can see on the interior, they do add um, this aluminum trim on this model. Now on the NX model, there's four different trims that you can get on your doors. Your base model is going to have your black stibble trim, and then your premium package is going to have your black prism trim, and then your S-Bart package is going to have this aluminum trim. Your luxury package is going to have your black open pour wood trim. So these are some nice options that they offer. Now my biggest complaint about this is that for some reason they decided to go with this black gloss trim. And don't get me wrong, it looks great when it's clean, but in reality, it's so hard to keep this clean. It does get fingerprints and dusty and it does scratch easily as well i really wish they thought about that when they were thinking about adding trim in the vehicle i really would have preferred if they at least matched it with the trim that was on the door panel or something that wasn't so hard to keep clean now they also add this trim on the steering wheel screen as well so that's something i wish they kind of would have improved on now, of course, looking at the screen, I will say it is very hard to keep this screen clean because it's always going to have fingerprints on it. So I do find that I do have to keep a microfiber cloth on me just so I don't see these fingerprints. So that is a little bit of pain that I have to deal with, but I can live with it for now at least. All right, now let's go ahead and start the vehicle. We have our new chime for the startup theme. 
And look at that upgraded 14 inch display screen. <laughs> that was like the biggest reason why I bought this vehicle because of the screen and because of the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, and here's another thing. I don't know why it keeps saying my user profile is not loaded. Granted, I do have my work phone connected right now, but I don't know if there's a way past this. If you have any suggestions on getting rid of this profile message, I would really appreciate that by the way. Now on the side of the vehicle, of course, we do have our gas release switch. So it opens from pushing the switch. You no longer hit it on the outside like the previous generation. And all NX350 models do take premium gasoline. The only one that takes regular gasoline is the NX250 model. And of course, next to that, we have our rear tailgate switch. And below that, we have our storage compartment. I usually just keep changing here. And of course, we have our hood release switch that's right here. We also have our automatic high beam switch. So simply just push down on the end of the switch to turn it on. And then you'll see a little green light letting you know that your high beams will enable automatically at night. Now, one thing I did notice is that when you do lock the vehicle from the inside, there's no audible tone that comes on. You simply hit the lock button and then there's nothing. Because of this digital latch system, there is no more audible tone. So I don't know how I feel about that. I'm still trying to get used to it because I'm so used to hearing an audible tone whenever I lock the vehicle and when I unlock it too. So that's something I probably have to get used to, but it would have been nice if they at least added a sound so you can at least know when the vehicle is locked or unlocked because there really isn't a way you can tell other than looking at the light that's on here. Now here is the telescopic steering wheel on this model. So on NX models, there's two different steering wheels that are offered. The first steering wheel is for your non heads up display model. It's going to feature more of your uh, voice command switch, your Bluetooth audio controls, and your radio controls. Now with your heads up display, it'll feature all these controls on your steering wheel that are used to toggle through different menus through your heads up display as well as your vehicle's information screen. So it is something that you may have to get used to at first. I didn't know how I felt about this initially, but after getting familiar with it, it is a little bit easier to use. So it's just getting a learning curve and learning how to use that properly. And of course you are able to see your heads up display information on your vehicle's display screen. So you can see your gear position, the miles per hour and your lane departure warning on your vehicle. Now, once I do hit on any of these switches on the touch sensitive controls on the steering wheel, that will toggle uh, different screens on the heads up display. So we can see on the very top, we have the phone for our Bluetooth, and then we have the voice command switch so we can make voice commands from here. Or if I hit this uh, bottom button right here, then we can toggle through a different menu. So let's see what happens after I do that. Now we can see our audio uh, controls from here or our radio controls if we wanna do that. Same thing on the other side of the steering wheel. If I go over here, then of course this will show me um, the vehicle information that's being displayed on the steering wheel. So that will also kind of show up as you're going down the screen. And of course it'll change it on your screen as you're driving. Now you can also adjust your heads up display from here as well. So you can move it up or down if you need to do that, but you can also do it from the main vehicle's display screen. And I'll go over that as well. Now here is the biggest improvement that Lexus made on this model, and it's including a new 14 inch display touch screen that allows you to access everything through touch. They no longer did the Lexus remote touchpad. So of course, a lot of people were complaining about that system. So they did away with that system completely and introduced the Lexus interface. Now the Lexus interface includes the vehicle's navigation system on the vehicle, but that's based on a three year trial. So after that three year trial, basically, if you want to keep the navigation system updated on your vehicle, then of course you have to purchase a subscription for $16 a month to keep that active. Now, I don't know how I feel about that because the navigation should be something that's always included in the vehicle because after three years, this whole navigation system will go away and you'll only have access to Apple CarPlay. Granted, I only use Apple CarPlay in the vehicle, but the few times that I do use the Lexus interface navigation system, it does work pretty well. However, there are a few things that they really could improve on. For example, when you do have this full map screen up, you really can't split the screen like you could on the previous generation. So really it's only this map screen, or if you go into like your radio screen, then of course you really couldn't have access to splitting uh, to view other information on there. 
Now, typically I usually use Apple CarPlay. I have my work phone connected right now, so I'm filming. Now, I usually just slide it over so I'm able to see like my Google Maps or my Spotify or my Pandora right here. So that kind of makes up for not being able to split the screen on the main Lexus interface. But it really would have been nice if they at least thought about this and said if I didn't want to look at the whole map while I was driving. So that's something they could definitely improve on. And I know I don't really go a lot into the navigation system in this video, but I did kind of do a whole walk around and tutorial on this. So I'll put that in the link below on how to use the Lexus interface navigation system. Of course, for audio, it gives us access to AM, FM, and satellite radio. We also have integrated Apple Music and Amazon Music. I haven't done this yet because I usually use Spotify or Pandora, so I'm not sure I'll be using that, so that's okay. And then, of course, we do have access to all our vehicle settings, and these are all the safety features equipped on this vehicle. So, of course, we have our lane departure alert, and that will vibrate the steering wheel when you get out of the lane without using a turn signal or deviate out of your lane. Now, front rear parking sensors, this is not something that's standard on all NX models. So, if you get a base NX250, that's around $40,000. It's not going to include your parking sensors. We did have this issue with another guest where they purchased their car, and their car didn't end up having parking sensors because it was a base model. Model. So make sure you're looking at the spec sheets if you are considering ordering it to see if this vehicle does have parking sensors or not. Now, of course, you do also have parking support brake, your blind spot monitor. Now, safe exit assist is a new feature on this model. So this works in conjunction with your digital latch. So let's say you're parking in outside and there's oncoming traffic coming towards you. If the vehicle senses that it's unsafe for you to get out, so let's say I try getting out, it will actually prevent you from opening the digital latch or the door. That way it lets you know through an audible tone that it's unsafe to get out. And this works in conjunction with the blind spot monitor to make sure that you are able to exit the vehicle safely. So that's kind of a new feature. I actually was able to um, have this happen to me one time where I was parking, um, parallel parking, and then there's cars coming on the side of me. So of course I was unable to get out until it was safe for me to to exit the vehicle. Now, of course, you also have rear cross traffic alert and then rear camera detection. So, of course, that will detect any moving vehicles or pedestrians. And, of course, we have road sign assist, which will automatically read out the speed limit signs as you're driving. So, if the sign says 35 miles per hour, it'll display a picture of that sign on the vehicle's main dash screen. Now, in the settings of the vehicle, we do have the user profile interface. I still don't know how I feel about the user profile because whenever I do start the vehicle, I usually have trouble with this. It'll say user profile not loaded. And then after like five or 10 seconds, then it'll load up my information. So I'm still trying to get, I guess, a handle on this. So that's something I'm still getting the hang of. Um, of course, we do have our Wi-Fi hotspot. I haven't used this because I don't really think I need to use that. Um, and then of course we do have vehicle customization. So if I do want to customize the head to display, I'm able to do this through the screen so I can adjust the brightness and the position of the screen. So of course, as I scroll down, this is where we can move it up, down, or kind of tilt it if we want to. Now, my favorite part of this vehicle is a thematic ambient illumination. And with this, you are able to customize the interior color of the vehicle at night. So you can choose from all these themes that are available in the vehicle. I do use this a lot, so this is probably one of my favorite things about this model. And you are able to choose a custom color. So if I go into color, I can simply drag on any color that I want and it'll change the interior lighting to whatever I please. Now, of course, it's hard to see it during the day. And the few suggestions I would make to improve this system, I wish the lighting was a little bit brighter because you can barely see it. Obviously, you're not going to see it during the daytime, but at night, it's very subtle. I wish it was a lot stronger, like if like the new LX. I don't know if you've seen that. You can kind of see it in one of my videos, but to me, that's more pronounced than on the NX. Now, the other thing that I don't really care for is that it won't allow you to change the ambient lighting as you're driving, which is kind of silly, but I guess that's just a safety thing on this model. So other than that, I do like they at least included this option, but they could have improved it to make it a little bit brighter and have more selection as far as customizing the color so you can have it a few different colors as you're driving. 
So overall, the Lexus interface has definitely improved from the last generation 11 navigation system and the fact that you do have wireless Apple CarPlay. That was probably the biggest seller for me. So of course, it does feature uh, your Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze, or whichever maps that you do use. I do find, however, that sometimes if I am um, in places with bad signal, that the maps will sometimes kind of crash on me and it'll default back to the Lexus screen. But I haven't experienced that too much. So I know there's probably going to be a few glitches when you are using the system, but I do know that they will kind of update this Lexus interface as it goes through time. So of course, whatever happens in the future, the Lexus interface will provide continuous updates for the main vehicle system. Whether you're having issues or bugs, that's something that is new for this model too. Another thing that I do like about the NX is that in your display, you are able to customize your display. So if you go into daytime mode, you are able to have a brighter screen or you can go into nighttime mode and that will have a darker screen. So I like that they allow you to have the choice on which screen you wanna choose as you're driving. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing. Now, as we move down, we do also have all our AC controls controlled through the touchscreen. So that way you have access to your heated, your ventilated seats for the driver and passenger, and you also have your heated steering wheel as well. Now your temperature dials are all controlled through here. So once you have the AC on, you can adjust it to move it up or down. And you also have your fan speed switch right here to adjust that. I think it was really smart for them to display all these controls on the screen versus hiding them in some other sub menus. That way it's just easier for you to access it and you just touch it and then it just starts up right away. You do have access to of course climate controls or climate settings and you have frequently used icons. Now on the cold weather package, you do get your heated steering wheel and you also get ventilated seats as well. So remember that all NX models feature standard heated seats. Whether you get a base NX250, it's always gonna have heated seats on every Lexus model. So that's something that they finally included as a standard option. Now below that, we have our USB ANC charging port, and we also have our wireless charging pad on the vehicle. So I have my work phone on here, so that is currently charging. So of course, when you see there's an orange light right here, that indicates that your device is charging. And of course, if I were to move the phone, then the light will turn green to let you know that you're ready to charge your phone. So just place it on there, and then it'll start charging. Now, my one complaint about this is that this does scratch pretty easily, so I wish they at least made it a little bit more high quality, you know. It doesn't really look that expensive. It honestly looks kind of cheap to me, the wireless charging pad. I wish they at least improved the material on here. And I've also heard that some Android users have had issues with their phone charging, so I'm not sure if it's an Android issue, if it's a car issue, but I do know with my iPhone, they usually work fine whether I'm using my work phone, which is an iPhone, and my normal phone, which is also an iPhone. Now you are also able to slide the phone. So of course this gives you additional storage in here as well as a 12 volt power outlet. I have two pairs of sunglasses, so I put one in here and I also put one up here. They finally added a sunglass holder on the NX, which is a great thing because on the last generation, you had that weird storage compartment with a mirror attached to it, which really didn't make sense at all. And of course, you can just push this right back out to slide this out. Of course, you do have two cup holders. These are stationary. They don't move. So these are just the way they are. Now, here's something that's also new on this model, and this is an electronic shifter. Now, every time you put the vehicle in drive, always, of course, make sure your foot's on the brake. But when you put it in drive, you have to shift left for neutral and then shift down for drive and then shift up for reverse or push down for manual. And then when you want to park, just push the P and of course that will park your vehicle. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not familiar with this. I'm pretty familiar with it because I've driven LSs and LC, so they all kind of have the same setup. Now I will say that sometimes it is hard when you're driving through an automatic car wash when you are trying to put the vehicle back in drive when it's in neutral. So always make sure that your foot is all the way down on the brake because if you try shifting, it won't allow you to do that. So when it is in neutral, make sure you move it all the way to the left again and then move it down and then that will put the vehicle in drive when you're exiting the car wash. So that's one suggestion I will give. You know, I wish it was a little bit easier to use that when you are exiting the car wash and then push P for park. 
Now we do have our traction control here and trail mode switch is a new feature that's available since this vehicle is all wheel drive. So it will kind of do some light off-roading whether you're driving on uh, dirt or gravel. So that's if you want to use that. Of course, we do have our brake hold feature, which I do love. I always use this on my last model as well. So basically it holds your position whether you're at the drive through at a stoplight. So that way, if you don't want to have your foot down on the brake, you just push this switch down, release your foot. That way it holds your position without you having to put it in park every time you're at the drive through And of course, to disengage it, just push your foot on the accelerator and then you'll be off. Now, here's a new feature on the NX, and this is called the Auto Start Stop Off Switch. So, you may notice if you do come to a stoplight, the vehicle's engine will shut down momentarily to save you more fuel and energy. That way, it's better for fuel and gas mileage. Now, I do notice that if you do want to turn this feature off, you just push the switch, and then, of course, you'll see an orange light right here. However, this will reset after every drive cycle, so every time you do start the vehicle again, you will have to keep hitting this if you don't want that feature to come on, which I'm not sure why they would have done this. It would have been nice just to at least have it push it once, and the car will remember throughout every drive cycle if you want it on or off. So that's my suggestion. Otherwise, the feature works great. The auto start stop feature works really good good when you do want to use it but if you don't want to use it you you basically have to keep pressing this every time you start the vehicle which i guess i'll just get used to that uh, of course we do have our downhill assist control on the vehicle so that will kind of stabilize the vehicle as you're going down an incline or a steep hill and of course we have our center console so this actually opens up both ways so you can open it from here or from the passenger side as well now, one thing I will mention is that I wish they at least included um, a storage compartment so you can at least fit some stuff better in here instead of all of it just being thrown in here. Uh, a try would have been nice, but I don't even think they offer it on this model. So that would have been nice just to at least have that in there. Now, of course, above that, we have our standard rear view mirror, which will display, of course, your home link system to pair up to three different garage doors. No digital rear view mirror on this model. I don't know if you can get it on the s -Sport package, but I have seen it on like a premium package or the luxury package. So I'm not sure if this is an option you can even get on the s -Sport package. And of course, as we move up here, of course, again, we have our sunglass holder and we also have our Lexus Safety Connect, which is our roadside assistance package on the vehicle. So, of course, if you do need to call for help, just push down on the switch and that will basically alert the Lexus Enrollment Center so that way they can send someone directly to your location for free for the first three years. Now, on this vehicle, I do have the upgraded panoramic moonroof. So, of course, that is a nice addition that I do get on the Esport Luxury Package. So, of course, if I do want to slide the roof back, I can hold down on this left portion of the switch. That way, it'll slide it all the way back. It actually goes about halfway, so it'll kind of stop in the middle. So, that's really the farthest it'll go for the roof. And, of course, I can slide it back in. And I can also tilt the roof as well. And of course, if I want to slide the shade back, I just hold down the shade switch that's right here, and that will slide all the way back. Now on my vehicle, I do have the upgraded panoramic view monitor. So of course, this will kind of display the surroundings of the vehicle if I want to see that bird's eye view camera from there. Now, I don't believe this is an option that you can get on the premium package like the previous generation. So you can only get this on the S-Sport luxury package or just your general luxury package on the vehicle. So you do have to have a higher trim package to get this feature. Of course, I can also see just the general surroundings of the vehicle. And then I can also customize the vehicle body color from here. Now, of course, when I do engage the vehicle in drive, it will show me the front view, the surroundings. And of course, if I put it in reverse, it'll show me that bird's eye view camera with the rear backup camera as well. And we are able to customize the lines of the vehicle as well. You also have a narrow view and then your widescreen view. And then push P for park. 
Now here's the spec sheet of my vehicle. So it's gonna have pretty much everything that you can get on the vehicle, minus the digital rear view mirror, the parking package, and the heated rear seats. But other than that, you do get everything else, including the 14 inch display screen, the Mark Lemsen audio system, the panoramic moonroof, the, the panoramic view monitor. So that's something that you all get. And the price of this vehicle is 56,000 with everything on it. So of course I did want everything when I was looking for the NX. So I made sure to get as much, many options as I could when I was looking at this model. All right, guys, so we are now driving in the 2022 Lexus NX350 F Sport. Now, I'll give some driving feedback as well, since I know a lot of people are interested in hearing that. I will say the first thing I do notice when I am driving this vehicle is how quiet the interior is. Uh, compared to the last model that I have, I heard a lot of wind noise, and it really was something that kind of bothered me on the last car. But the way they insulated this model, it actually feels a lot more quiet, and of course, it, it drives so much smoother compared to the last model. They really did a good job with refining the drive of this vehicle. The steering wheel is light, but it is nimble when you need it to be. And you can also change the setting to Sport S, Sport S Plus, or an Eco as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive the vehicle in Sport S. You can kind of see that the dial changes as well, or I can put it in Eco mode if I want to save more gas. Now, I will mention that, of course, um, when going over bumps, you can kind of notice there's a, a little bit of a roll there, but um, that's something to be expected with this car. A lot of people also ask how the vehicle sounds when you're driving, if you can hear the tires or not. Uh, since these are run flat tires, a lot of people say that they are a little bit noisier or they're louder. And really, it isn't something that I haven't noticed too much. It's really something that if you're driving the vehicle if, with no radio on, you probably will hear some road noise. But I usually have the radio up most of the time. So it isn't something that I really notice when I'm driving out. Uh, it kind of just depends where you're driving on to, uh, whether the road is smooth or not. And that will kind of influence how it sounds in the vehicle as well. Overall, I will say that the drive has been improved greatly on this vehicle. It definitely feels much more grounded to the ground. Since my last car was a front wheel drive NX, this is all wheel drive. So I think that just makes a difference in general when you have more traction or, or grip on the road. And I really like that. At the end of the day, this vehicle is still going to be a practical SUV. So of course, it'll have some pickup, but it's nothing like compared to whether you're on an IS or something a little bit faster than this, which is okay because this isn't the kind of car that you'll probably go speeding in. It does have decent pickup, but what it's meant for is being a sport utility SUV. It also does have a pretty good turn radius. So of course, there we go. So definitely, you know, not as small as the UX, but it still handles uh, really good whenever you're making tight turns. Now, I've been averaging about 22 miles per gallon on my vehicle, but I know it's been about the same gas mileage on my last NX that I had. So I know because this vehicle is all wheel drive, of course, it's going to make it a little bit heavier, but it would have been nice to improve that gas mileage on a newer model like this. I do know that if you do get the hybrid model, it will definitely be improved compared to this as well. And I really consider the hybrid model, but I really prefer the aesthetics of the F Sport package because the ultrasonic blue was my first choice. And I really wanted a car that kind of just stood out from everything else. And that's why I got this model. But overall, this vehicle is a great road trip car. As you can see, I already have about 7,600 miles in this vehicle. I've had made a lot of trips to Dallas, Austin. I even drove to Oklahoma. So, you know, I do put a lot of miles on my car. Um, I am a little bit concerned because I did lease this vehicle for 15K and for three years. So I'm pretty sure I may go over my lease, but um, I may end up just buying this vehicle because NX production is still pretty hard right now. You know, there's still a lot of things going on with the factory. So of course it's not back on the full scale as it would be, you know, I guess because of COVID. So they're still trying to work on that. But I think in the meantime, I don't think the value of this car will be going down anytime soon because this car is definitely in demand. And there are a lot of people that have asked me if I want to sell this car and get into something else. But I don't know if I'm ready to let go of it because I literally just got into this car like three months ago.
Now, when I do come up to a stoplight, the vehicle's engine will shut down momentarily. So, of course, this will show up a green letter A, letting you know that the auto start stop system is active. And, of course, if I wanted to disable it, I would just have to hit this button. That way, it shuts down that system. So, of course, that would turn off that feature. There is a small delay when you are coming to a light as soon as you hit your foot on the accelerator. But it isn't something that I notice too often. But if I do want a quick, I guess, floor it to go it does kind of get in the way of that. So that's something I wish I could just turn it off uh, once instead of turning it off every drive cycle. Hey guys, this wraps up my honest review on my new 2022 Lexus NX350 S Sport. So overall, Lexus did some amazing things with introducing new technology on this vehicle. We now have the upgraded 14 inch display touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay. The upgraded Mark Levinson audio system sounds amazing. And I really think that Lexus is in the right direction with all this new technology. Now, granted, there are some minor improvements they could make with the glitches that are in the system for the user profile or the Apple CarPlay glitches where it crashes frequently. But other than that, that's something that they can fix down the road. And I'm confident that in the future, they'll be able to do a little bit more refinement when it comes to their new future models that will be out later this year. I will suggest that if you are looking for a vehicle that's similar to this one, I do recommend that you go out to your local Lexus dealership so you can get your name on the list so you can get in line to order a car that's like this. I did have to wait about four months for this vehicle, so I think it was well worth the wait because I did get almost everything that I wanted, minus the red seats, and I did get this black interior, and really it's not too bad, but I'm starting to grow accustomed to it. But other than that, if you have any other suggestions for any other videos, or if there's something that I didn't mention in this video that you want answered, please leave a comment below. But if you did like this video, please like and subscribe. And I try to post updates on vehicles as we do get them at our dealership. So definitely let us know as well. Also, if you don't know who I am, my name is Kenny Bosick and I'm a technology specialist at North Park Lexus at Dominion in San Antonio, Texas. I'm in charge of being the technology specialist and social media manager for the store. So that way I manage the Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow our dealership's Instagram at Lexus Dominion, or you can follow my personal Instagram at Kenny underscore Bossig. Well, guys, I want to thank y'all for watching today, and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.